the Western mindset with health, okay, Western medicine, the, all of the Western part of the world, the mindset with health is a reactive mindset. Is a reactive mindset. And, and we know, right, from Stephen R. Cuffey, we hear this all the time, you wanna be proactive and not reactive. And I wanted to share this. By the way, my assistant told me this is my 100th car chat. So thank you for joining me in the car chats if you have over the years. These are usually when something's just like dying to come out of me, okay? And this is what's coming out. I shared, some of you may have seen, I shared that I'm wearing a continuous glucose monitor right now. And on Facebook, I got a lot of comments of like, well, why do you even need that if you have regular blood sugar? Are you diabetic? Like, why are you wearing that? You don't need that unless you have prediabetes or diabetes. <laughs> and I figured I would get some comments like that on this. And I think it's a great way to open up this discussion of how we look at health in the Western world. We live deeply entrenched. We have been entrained to be in a reactive mindset when it comes to our health. In other words, don't look into anything really. Don't do much until something freaking breaks. And I'll tell you, Western medicine is really great for when something broke, okay? You having a heart attack, you're gonna want Western medicine. You broke your leg, you're gonna want Western medicine, okay? In that acute moment. But the problem is, is so many of us have been taught that this is our only option. And all of the ways of thinking that go with Western medicine have infiltrated into our daily lives, how we show up with our bodies of, I'll just basically completely neglect this thing until something breaks. And then when it does, then on top of that, I probably won't find out why it broke and what lifestyle contributions <laughs> caused it to break or what's actually going on inside my body. I'm going to now get on medications to manage this thing that broke because I let it get so far gone that now stuff's breaking down. Does that sound like a life that you want to live? This is your, this is your vehicle. This it for this life that you're in. Your little avatar, mine I call Tara Garrison, this is it. This is my vehicle until the day that I die in this thing. And so it's crazy to me that we will get checkups on our car before we will get checkups on our bodies. Our bodies, not only is it this you know discussion I'm opening up of it's what's going to carry us all through our life and take care of it, it's it heavily impacts our reality, the way that we perceive life. So for example, we'll take blood sugar as an example. It's a continuous glucose monitor I'm wearing, just checking my blood sugar all the time. If my blood sugar is going, doo -doo 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 -doo, guess what happens? Now my daily reality is impacted by that. When it's, if it's super high for a long time, I'm freaking exhausted and tanked and want to take a nap. If it's going low, I'm shaky, I'm on edge, I'm hangry, I'm biting people's heads off, I'm jonesing for all these super quick fixes of sugar and all these things. So that's heavily impacting your reality. That means you're going major mood swings from exhausted, tired, I got no energy to build my life that I want to live because I just can't even care about caring to now I'm gonna be biting off the heads of the people closest to me and annoyed and frustrated all the time because my blood sugar's low and I'm not even aware of it. I have no idea why I'm acting like this. When we can find out. Or we can do a hair mineral analysis and maybe you find out that you're super magnesium deficient and you're anxious and you have low energy and you're just pushing, 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 pushing. Your sleep quality sucks, all these things. And you can do a test and you can find out and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm magnesium deficient. And you start taking a high quality magnesium that can actually be absorbed and your life changes. Your reality changes. Now you're not as anxious. You're able to be in calm. You're able to meditate. You're able to sleep. Your mood changes. So this Western medicine mindset that we're in, that we all, if you live in the West, now I'll give credit to some of the Eastern countries like Chinese medicine, India's got Ayurveda. Those types of approaches are, how is your soul? How is your mindset? Do you have stuff you need to heal from? How is your liver doing? Not now you have fatty liver, so we recommend that you get on this medication. 
it's checking in all along like wow these are all some signs that your liver has some dysfunction maybe we need to do a little drainage protocol on that and wow things can start working well again and your whole life can change the eastern historically a lot of the eastern approaches to health have been about health the western model is not about health at all it is not about health optimization and I'm just going to not mince words. Sometimes I get a little PC about this because I don't want to like hurt anybody's feelings. But like your doctor, your regular Western medicine doctor is not trained, is not trained on how to help you with nutrition and some of the deeper contributions. What's your sunlight like? What's your circadian rhythm like? Like, let's actually go into these organs. Oh, what your vitamin D is low. How does that actually impact you? They're like, oh, it's low, you know, take some vitamin D. Ask, ask your Western medicine doctor what vitamin D does in the body. And they'll probably say something about like bones and calcium and, you know, some things like that. But ask them about your immune system. Ask them about your ability to uh, everything. I'm like, what doesn't it do? Your energy levels, your ability to work out, like your ability to recover. We saw during the pandemic that the, the hashtag vitamin D was censored, was blocked. When vitamin D is crucial for immune health, immune health, I, yeah, fatigue, thank you, Julie. I, I found that criminal, criminal, that we are not allowing people to get educated on a social media platform, that they need to make sure that their vitamin D levels are adequate in order to have healthy immune response during a health crisis. That is insane. I almost lost this account because I was like, okay, I'll freaking go bag groceries before I'm not going to try to help people out during a health crisis with some things that they need to be able to protect themselves. So that is a great example of the Western model. Don't build your underlying health. Don't check in on your body. Don't even make sure that your vitamin D levels are adequate when it's one of the biggest pieces of healthy immune response. Instead, let's not let you find out about that actually and let's force you to inject something in your body that we have no long-term data on, but hey, that's the model. Yeah, preventing is costing big pharma, exactly. So, uh, <laughs> D3's been out of stock for a while on Amazon, yeah. so. If you have grown up in a Western culture and you are in the mindset of if it ain't broke, don't fix it, just completely neglect really checking in on my body in any way, shape or form until something drastically wrong goes happens and I'm having all these weird symptoms and I can't figure it out and then I go into the doctor and I find out I gotta have my gallbladder removed or my liver is dysfunctional or something like that, it's really not your fault. <laughs> You have been trained to think that way. And it's it's not conspiracy theory. It is just reality that the pharmaceutical companies contribute to the medical school textbooks. So sometimes, I mean no disrespect, there are some really great doctors out there that are doing the best they can in a system that is not health promoting for the most part. But many doctors are, in my opinion, highly trained pharmaceutical sales reps. They are taught when somebody has this, you give them that. Not, I wonder why that person is having that problem in the first place. Hypothyroidism is a great example of this. Oh, their TSH is really high. Okay, give them thyroid medication. That's it. That's as far as it goes for a lot of people. That's it. Not, hey, I wonder why your thyroid is, is, is acting up, isn't able, half the time they don't even, they didn't even check the rest of the thyroid hormones to even find out what really is going on. That's Western medicine. So we, the people, have to educate ourselves, open our minds, that this system that we have been born into and entrained into is not health promoting and we have to go seek out our own love and support of our own bodies. I know that's why a lot of you guys follow me and many other 
health accounts and there's some incredible people out there. And that's why I'm so grateful for social media because now the normal people, normal people like me, who's just a health coach and a mom who's really, really nerdy about this stuff and really, really into it has the opportunity to share some of these incredible things that I've discovered by going against the grain and learning some of the true health promoting things that are out there for us. So we have to make that choice. This is your vehicle. This, this is a vehicle that impacts how you feel on the daily. Your soul or however you see it impacts your physiology and your physiology impacts your soul. It's real hard to live a good life when you have horrible blood sugar regulation and you have no thyroid hormones and your hunger hormones are all messed up and your gut is dysfunctional and your liver's all backed up and all. It's real hard to just mindset your way through that kind of crap. So if you want to live a good life, it's gonna, you're going to have to step out of this Western model of just completely neglect my body until something breaks and then get on medications for the rest of my life and feel like shit. Most of those medications, I consider a lot of those medications people are on absolutely criminal. It is crazy to me that we have peyote, mushrooms, psilocybin, uh, cannabis, um, uh, what else is on there? You know, the, plants that that grow on the planet that we all just dropped into and some guy named Bob who's big and important and a legislator is going to say you can't have that screw you Bob and then they're going to make legal some of these medications that deplete you of all your B vitamins deplete you of your CoQ10 deplete you of all these things that you need for basic cellular function and that's all legal and popped out like crazy but these things that can create deeper healing for people on a soul level that then impacts their physiology are schedule one substances. That's, that's America and a lot of other countries that have those similar kind of models in the Western world. It's gross and I'm not trying to change it. I'm, I get, I can't change anything outside of myself. And the way I see it is instead of, you know, wishing, wishing the Western medicine model was different and I'm going to change it. And, uh, no, the way I see it is if you want for an old archaic system that is so deeply entrenched to just naturally die, you just create a new system that functions way better and gives people what they need. And then that old system slowly starts to die. So if you know anyone who has, I, I'm to this day, I'm shocked. Like so many people, like they have no idea when they, when I say you should go to a naturopathic doctor for that, they think I'm talking about like the old school, like in the eighties, no disrespect, but like that homeopath that like, you know what I mean? I'm sorry. I'm going to offend somebody, but naturopathic doctors are incredible. Most of them are open to Western medicine approaches when absolutely needed. And they're going to say, Hmm, I wonder why your thyroid hormones are low. How is your life? Do, do you need to go to a therapist? Okay. Let's have you go to a therapist to get through that childhood trauma. Okay. What's actually going on with your liver and your gut microbiome and how you're processing foods. Okay. Let's actually do a deep dive into what's actually going on with you and heal it so that you don't have to live like this. Western medicine does not do that. Period. End of story. I can't tell you how many people have come to me and they have massive health issues, massive underlying health issues. And they went to a Western medicine doctor and they said, I think you're depressed. You just need to get on an antidepressant with no, well, they got abysmally low vitamin D, which will make you feel depressed. They have poor thyroid function. Their gut is a wreck and they're just told to get on an antidepressant. Okay. That's what Western medicine does. That is all moat for the most part in terms of chronic, deep underlying health issues. They are not the people to go to. It's like going to an auto repair shop and asking them to fix your piano. They don't do that. And so we have to educate our people. If you are a health nut, maybe you are, if you're following me, send people this video that have no idea. Talk to them. We have to, the people close to us, there is a whole nother way. It's called functional medicine, integrative medicine, natural medicine. If you have an underlying, like you just feel like shit all the time or stuff's going wrong or you went to your Western medicine doctor, they're like, whoa, your liver labs are whack and all this stuff. 
say thank you very much for letting me know and get your ass into a naturopathic doctor's office or a functional medicine doctor's office or an integrative medicine doctor. Those are the kind of the key words there or a holistic health coach that's really, really into that topic that you need. Okay. All right. Let me uh, see some of these comments here. How can I find the right homeopathic doc or healer? That's a really great, great question. Um, follow a, a friend of mine. She is absolutely incredible. Her name is Dr. Elizabeth Rogers. Um, she, her whole, she is a epidemiologist, super highly trained epidemiologist is like studying the root cause of disease in populations and people. And she created a system to exactly that. That's her business is helping you find somebody who will actually be able to help you to know what kind of questions to ask resources, all of it. So, um, I can't, I'll have to tag her and I'll tag her in the comments after. Okay. Elizabeth, Dr. Elizabeth Rogers. She's been on my podcast too. She's like the shit. I have so much respect for her. Uh, Western medicine doesn't want to make people healthy. It wants to make money. Exactly. They don't ask why ask, ask your Western medicine doctor why you have the health issue that you have. Oh, you know, stuff just kind of happens as you get older. It happens. It's, generally the answer. Recently, someone told me that their doctor told them that their cholesterol was high from protein shakes. I'm like, what? You know what I mean? I was just like, dude, if you want to be healthy, Western medicine is not the place to go for that. If you got some sort of acute medical emergency. They are the person to go for that for sure. Okay. But once you found out, let's say you go in and they're like, Hey, it looks like you got gout or you got some sort of chronic health issue. It looks like you got hypothyroidism. Thank you very much. And then go to natural medicine, integrative medicine, functional medicine to figure out why you actually have that issue. Julie, thank you. It's just at Dr. Elizabeth Rogers for, if you want, she would be an amazing resource if you're like wanting help on how to find somebody good. But honestly, most of my clients usually work with a naturopathic doctor or functional medicine doctor, or integrative medicine doctor, because they got some deeper issues. And most of them are just fantastic. I've never, I mean, I think I've had one where I was like, mm, maybe go to another one. And then she, that client, she got some really great help. But for the most part, oh man, they're incredible. Um, Oh, I, I was just, uh, I was talking about Elizabeth Rogers because, uh, she is a doctor who her whole business is designed around helping you find a, a doctor who can actually help you. Right. So questions to ask resources, all that. All right. That's it. Remember the Western mindset is don't find out anything about my body really until something broke. And then once I find that out, now I'm just going to manage symptoms with medication or honestly, sometimes it's just like nothing. <laughs> and the, the optimization, the new mindset, the type of people who hire me, the people I work with, there's a lot of us out there, a lot of us out there, there's this whole world. If you haven't discovered it, let me introduce you. There is an entire world of people out there that think very differently than this and are thinking, how do we optimize health? How good does it get? How do I check in on things before it's too late so I can live my best life so I can thrive? It's a thriving mindset. That is health optimization. That is health. And Western medicine is not about health. So if you have stuff that's going on, I'm just really, really encouraging you to go a different route. I don't know how else to say it. I think it's criminal that uh, regular family doctors are prescribing antibiotics like crazy and then giving those people absolutely zero protocol to rebuild their microbiome after wiping out about a third of their gut microbiome from the antibiotic. Antibiotics are life-saving. I'm not definitely not anti-antibiotic. But to not tell people to not educate people, hey, guess what? This is also going to wipe out a lot of your beneficial bacteria. And so you need to get on a protocol to rebuild healthy microbiome after this. That's medical negligence, in my opinion. So 
that's the kind of stuff that happens. And so if you're in this, if you're, if you live in the Western world, you are going to have to change the way you think because what you got taught was normal was to completely neglect yourself, wait for something to break and then live a shitty life of managing that for the rest of your life. How about when people are diagnosed with type two diabetes, what are they told? Get on insulin. When at that stage, early on, type two diabetes is reversible in 99.9% .9 of people. But they're not told that. They're not told, hey, you can lower your carbohydrates a lot, increase proteins and fibers, let's take a look at your gut microbiome and fix that. And you don't have to have type two diabetes for the rest of your life and be on insulin every single day and feel like shit every single day and get to a point where maybe you lose a limb and you're on dialysis and you're gonna have dementia and be like completely in a horrible mental state like my mom is right now for the until the day that you die they don't tell anybody that they say get on insulin you have you have this condition and that's just how it is and take this insulin for the rest of your life that's fucking bullshit and it pisses me off yes it does because that that led to my mom having a horrible quality of life in her later years and having a massive stroke that landed her in a nursing facility because now her dementia Alzheimer's is so progressed that she can't even function, think straight, walk, none of it. And yeah, that pisses me off that nobody told her that she could reverse it. They told her be on this insulin for the rest of your life. That's what you get. That's what you get with Western medicine. So we have to educate ourselves and we have to educate the people around us. You don't have to live like that. That is not the only option so much of the chronic health issues that people are experiencing could, can be healed. They can be healed. You can find highly educated professionals that can say, hey, let's help you discover why this is happening and give you the path out of it so you can heal your body and live an amazing life. So stay hungry, friends. Take your health into your own hands follow people who are into holistic medicine, integrative medicine, functional medicine, natural medicine. Share it with those you love. Okay. And then um, keto Eva. Yes, I do coach people. That's my full-time job. This is social media stuff is just kind of for fun. But yes, I have a full client load. Um, if you can, if you don't know, if you're new to follow me, I do training, nutrition, mindset, and biohacking in my coaching and biohacking is just like my fun word for health optimization, all this stuff, blood tests. Uh, some of my clients wear these if they would like to, um, or if they have like big signs of blood sugar dysregulation. Um, we do DNA testing, we do hair mineral analysis, we do gut testing, all those things. If people want to, they don't have to, but um, we can go as deep as they'd like to on their inner health. And if there's anything that's outside of my scope, then I do refer them out to natural pathic, naturopathic doctor. Um, but yeah, training, nutrition, mindset, biohacking. That's what I do. That is my full gig. All this podcast, social media stuff is just kind of extra. <laughs> um, what's up, dude? Uh, Biggery. Uh, I think a lot of people see things as hopeless once they get diagnosed. Of course. Yes, absolutely. Cause that's what they're told. You have this and that's just how it is. Um, almost entirely cause they uh, adopt the ideally ideology of it running in their family. Right. Like my mom has type two diabetes. She's had it since I was in high school. She has very progressed Alzheimer's. I have the gene risk for getting Alzheimer's. I live in zero fear of getting Alzheimer's because I know that that future is in my hands by lifestyle and the choices that I make. That's why I watch my blood sugar, you know, do all the things to make sure that I'm healthy and I don't see it as fate. That is what epigenetics is. There are a few very rare things that are like, okay, yeah, like, you know, you got celiac. Okay. Yeah. You got celiac, but you don't have to lit. You don't have to feel like you have celiac. If you can just watch it through your nutrition, you know? Um, yeah, it's the habits that run in their family. Yeah. There are genetic predispositions, but it's hammered into reality through those habits that are picked up. Do you have to be local to work with you? No, no, I don't. It's all remote. I've got clients and all over from all over. Um, God created sp specifically to like healthy foods that we can enjoy. Yeah, exactly. Carnivore Joe. And then 
uh, all the food industries, you know, the food companies, they have mimicked the things that were naturally supposed to be wired to like in nature, like colorful foods. And they, you know, colored the Starburst and colored the, the Skittles because if they were all just white, you wouldn't eat as many, right? So they're hijacking our biological urges to make us want to eat more for money. They have massive food scientist budgets, billions of dollars go into the, the food science and the marketing to make you want more of their stuff so they can make money. And so cool. We can either be really mad at them about that, or we can take our health into our own hands and start to make changes ourselves. Um, what do you recommend when, when we're required to carry insurance, but never use it and all natural paths don't take insurance usually? Julie, I, I mean, I have like super high deductible <laughs> insurance just in case I like get in a massive car accident and have to be life flighted or something like that, you know? So I don't go like medically bankrupt, but I just have that in my back pocket and I just take really good care of my health. Also, um, there's these telehealth companies now. There's one called Sesame that I've been using since I moved out to Hawaii. It was like 40 bucks. My, my son got swimmer's ear, right? So we had to get some drops, you know, so you can do stuff like that too. So you don't even have to like, you can get the high deductible stuff and not have to fork out a ton of money on these, you know, little visits when you have acute things. Um, I love learning this stuff. My mom has dementia and I love studying to have a healthy brain. Yeah. Uh, carnivore Joe. I mean, obviously you've already, you're doing like a deep ketogenic diet. That's very helpful for maintaining healthy blood sugar. And I would say also, um, adding a good quality fish oil. If you're not already doing that to your life is really, really protective. Um, so healthy blood sugar, fish oil, you know, keep those omega threes higher than your omega sixes. And, um, so you can check that omega three, omega six ratio and then keep your blood sugar healthy. Um, yeah, the gene says you don't have the genetic makeup to F around because you're genetically predisp predispositioned to find out. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Thank you guys. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your questions. Um, that's my hundredth car chat. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day. Okay, bye.